In this video, I will be talking about power. And I do not mean the kind of power that you give to someone after voting for them based on how pretty they are or how clever their tweets are. No, in this video, I will be talking about the RF electricity's type of power. The type of power that squirts out of your radio after you press the button on the side. And more specifically, I will be talking about how much of a difference having more power makes or does not make when you're talking to your friends that are many fars away. Now there is a mathematical formulation for calculating how many fars a given amount of RF electricities will squirt, but normal people do not care about that because normal people know that there are far too many variables in the real world to accurately predict how many fars a given amount of RF electricities will squirt. Variables like mountains and trees and houses full of fat people. So most normal people prefer to experience how power affects RF electricities and how many fars a radio can tox in a real world scenario. And that my friend is exactly why the Not a Rubicon Institute exists. To inform and learn its vast audience with copious amounts of thick, creamy, velvety smooth knowledge like no other channel in the YouTubes has the guts to do because all those other channels on the YouTubes are too afraid to anger the woke mob when they talk about RF electricities. But here at the Narupkan Institute, we are not afraid of the crybabies. Now, as you probably already know, for a long time, many of the GMRS experts have been telling us that in order to talk many FARs on a GMRS radio, you must have more power. But it has long been the contention of many other people that a good antenna in a good location is far more important than power for getting many FARs on a GMRS radio or any UHF radio. A UHF radio, or the UHF band for you normal people, is a radio that transmits in the 380 megahertz to just over 500 megahertz range. So this would include GMRS frequencies and the 70 centimeter ham band. Oops, sorry, I forgot. I do not have a ham radio operator's license, and therefore some people have decreed that I am not permitted to say the word 70 centimeter or ham band on YouTube. I'm sorry, I'll try to stay in my own lane. Ladies and gentlemen, the ugly truth is that more power does not always mean more FARs, especially if you're only talking about small increases, small increments of more power. For example, going from five watts of power, like on this Bufwang UV5R, to eight watts, like on this Bufwang BFF8 HP eight watt radio, going from five to eight watts, you will not see any increase in FARs about the only thing you will see. The only thing that you will be able to observe is the battery draining faster. However, going from five watts to 50 watts can often result in a better signal for whoever is listening to you. And that extra power can also help you punch through things like walls and fat people, thereby giving you much better penetration. Penetration. Another advantage to having more power is that more power may help you step on other people, all else being equal. That means when they try to talk and you talk at the same time with more power, you will control the airwaves. Again, all else being equal. Okay, enough of me talking. Now allow me to talk about my real world demonstration, which will be comparing more power to a better antenna to see which one will increase your signal and thereby increase your FARs more. This is the mystery we seek to solve. And to help me demonstrate if more power is better or if a better antenna is better, I have my friend Chris at his house, 10 miles away from me in that direction. And I also have this, my SDR. And while you and I watch the SDR screen, Chris is going to be transmitting at different power levels 
and with different antennas, so that you and I can see with our very own eye holes if more power is better or if a better antenna is a more optimal choice for increasing your FARs. But first, allow me to explain what is happening and what you are looking at. This is the output screen of my SDR as viewed with the free SDR Sharp software. On the left, you will see the dB range. For all of you normal people, dB is a measure of how strong the signal is. And as you can see, the range goes from negative 20 down to negative 70. The lower the number, meaning the closer to negative 70 that the signal is, the weaker the signal. And the higher the number, or closer to negative 20 at the top of the screen it is, the stronger the signal is. So, as an example, negative 65 would be a very weak signal, and negative 25, which is closer to zero, would be a very strong signal. And to clarify, and to hopefully prevent a few stupid comments, it does not matter what the actual numbers are, because we are only using the numbers for comparison. What does matter is the difference between the numbers when Chris transmits at different power levels and with different antennas. And now that you understand what you are looking at, allow me to explain what is going to happen next. Chris, who as I mentioned is 10 miles away, is going to transmit using his Wuxin Ocean KG-1000G at 5 watts using a small, poorly placed antenna. Chris will then switch to transmitting at 50 watts on the same poorly placed antenna and we will observe how much stronger his signal strength is. Chris will then connect his Wuxin Ocean KG-1000G to a larger antenna in a better position and will do the same thing again so that we can again compare the data. And for clarification, because if I don't clarify everything, some moron will leave a comment proclaiming that we're doing it wrong, Chris will be transmitting on the frequency of 467.700 megahertz, which as most of you probably know is the input frequency for a GMRS repeater. We chose to use this frequency because it is very quiet and has very little use. But to be clear, the signal we will be measuring is a simplex signal meaning that the signal is going from Chris's radio 10 miles away directly to the antenna of my SDR. Chris's signal will not be going through a repeater. The small antenna Chris is using is a Nagoya mobile antenna mounted on a cookie sheet for a ground plane, and the large antenna is a base antenna on his roof approximately 25 feet higher than the small antenna. First, Let's see how Chris sounds transmitting at 5 watts using his small antenna. Chris, 530. 5 watts, small antenna. And as you just saw, Chris is coming in at a negative 64 dB, which is barely even showing up. We can't even really hear him. Now Chris will switch to 50 watts on the same small antenna. And at 50 watts on the small antenna, Chris came in at negative 52 dB, which is still a very weak signal. So increasing the power by a factor of 10 from 5 watts to 50 watts gave Chris a 12 dB boost in his signal. In other words, the signal did get better, but just barely. We will now see what happens when Chris changes antennas from the small antenna to the larger antenna in a better location on his roof. 530, checking in with his big antenna, low power, five watts. Let's go, Brandon. Which, as you can see, is coming in at about negative 42 dB and is a very good signal. That same five watts going to a good antenna on the roof gave Chris a 22 dB boost in his signal. That is almost two times more of a boost than what he got going from 5 watts to 50 watts with his small antenna. And when we compare 5 watts to 50 watts on his big antenna, at 5 watts we got about negative 42 dB, which was a very good signal. 
and when he transmitted at 10 times more power, 50 watts on the big antenna, we get a signal strength of about negative 33, which is a very good signal, but all of that extra power only gave him 9 dB more signal strength. However, if you recall, going from the small antenna to the better antenna gave Chris a 22 dB crease in signal strength, which is over two times more of an increase that he got when going from 5 watts to 50 watts on either antenna. So as you just saw with your very own eye holes, more power does not necessarily mean more FARs. And upgrading your antenna or just changing the location of your antenna can potentially make a bigger difference than just trying to pump in more power.